Welcome back to another episode of Card Story Podcast. And uh, today we're going to go back to 1990. And in 1990, we had a lot of premieres coming out. Uh, Leaf Baseball just came out. It was supposed to be like a premium product at the time. We had um, Skybox Basketball, which was a whole new design in basketball cards. We had um, Fleer Football, Action Packed Football, Fleer um, Stars and Stripes, Pro Set did a collective book. And uh, Star Picks came out. So there's a lot of new products coming out. Hockey released four new sets. You had Opeach Premier, you had Upper Deck, you had Score, and you had Pro Set. So a lot of new products are coming out in 1990. And one of the main things I collected in 1990 was Marvel Universe. And I was about 12 years old, and uh, the holograms in that set were pretty cool. It was a whole new design, and Marvel was always big. And uh, that has the Stan Lee card in it. So those cards are still popular now. I don't know what I, what I did with any of those cards. I lost all of them. Probably sold them all at the flea market. And uh, 1990. 1990 was the year of the error card. Like there were some error cards before that. But 1990, there were so many error cards in these sets. There was too many to name. But uh, the most famous error card comes from 1990 tops. It's the Frank Thomas no name on front that card recently sold this in the recent time like a, a psa psa altered sold for six thousand dollars and the bgs8 sold for eight thousand seven hundred so the two most recent sale for that card the uh, error cards that are rare could be worth lots of money but the dunros and uh, pro set all those errors back then they're not worth much there's just so many of them and they did the corrections and they're all over the place but uh the the two most known error cards from 1990 dunross are probably the juan gonzalez reverse negative card and the john smoltz card with tom glavin on the front neither are worth much but they're the two that you probably know the best and then in that year in 1990 tops also made a george bush card in his Yale college uniform, which is uh, really hard to get. Top said they made a hundred or less of these cards and they were like given to the White House and there's a glossy version of some. And I don't even know where they got distributed, but uh, if you can find one out in the wild, they go for a pr pretty lot of money. Like a PSA altered recently sold for $3,450 and $3,550. And and a PSA 8 was 15000 but a best offer was accepted. So some of these junk wax error cards you can find could be worth lots of money if you can find these errors or short prints. And like, let's start out with 1990 football, the draft class that year. You had two quarterbacks coming in that were supposed to be huge quarterbacks in the NFL. Jeff George, which every team wanted. People were trying to get Jeff George. He had a monster arm, but never really panned out to be a great NFL quarterback. He had a couple good years, but cards are worth nothing. And he had Andre Ware, who was the seventh pick in the draft. He was the Heisman Trophy winner. He went to the Detroit Lions. Never panned out, never did nothing. And Jeff George was the first pick in the draft. Number The number two pick in the draft was Blair Thomas by the Jets, the running back. It was a bust. The only good player that actually came out of this draft was Emmett Smith, who was picked uh, 17th overall by Dallas, and he's the only Hall of Famer in this first round. And uh, like, you had Daryl Thompson, running back, Steve Brossard, running back, Rodney Hampton. He had a few good years for the Giants, and Dexter Carter, and he was a bum for the 49ers. And then in uh, baseball, 1990 baseball, you had some guys that were uh, getting good money at that time. Like Ben McDonald was a huge prospect. His cards were big. And uh, Steve Avery, his 1990 Leaf, that card was going for well over $20 at the time. He was a big deal. You had players like Todd Zeal, Eric Anthony, John Olerud, Joey Albert Bell. Like there were some big, uh, at the time, these were big players. And at the time, the cards were going for good prices. And, uh, and then we have uh, in the NHL, it was a pretty big year in the NHL. We got all these new cards coming out. You got uh, Yamir Yager, 
and it was Eric Lindros. Like that scorecard was a uh, a pretty big card at the time. Eric Lindros was so big with score. He must have had a special deal with score or something. Because when you bought the factory set, it came with the Eric Lindros set in it. And that was the only way you could get the set was through the factory set. And I know I bought one at the time just to put away thinking Lindros was going to be a big deal and having this extra set was going to be worth something. And that set is worth nothing. It's like a $10 factory set. I think back then it would probably cost you 40 bucks to buy one. Where the uh, NHL had yeah, Martin Brodeur, Eric, uh, Ed Belfort, Jeremy Vronick, Fedorov, Mike Madano, Owen Nolan, Pavel Bure, F Felix Pavin. A lot of good rookies at the time, and a lot of these guys were going for good money. Like a Fedorov or Peach Premier, that was a pretty big card. I know it went at least for over $20 at the time. Yager is probably the best card you can still have out of this set. He played for 40 years. And then uh, we go back to the NBA draft. It was the first year that uh, they put drafted players in the set. Like hoops, the, the draft lottery cards. It's like the first year this ever happened. And um, Fleer also did an update set. So it was the first year you had like rookies in it that year. Like in the regular set, the rookies were Derek Coleman. No, Derek Coleman was a draft pick. Uh, the, in the rookies were Sean Kemp. You know, Sean Kemp was probably the biggest. And Tim Hardaway. They were the two biggest rookies at the time. And still the two biggest rookies in them sets. Sean Elliott, Nick Anderson, Vladi Divac, Mookie Blaylock. And then the drafted players, Derek Coleman was the number one pick coming out of Syracuse. He was supposed to be a big deal. He was an okay NBA player, nothing great. We had Gary Payton, the glove, Hall of Famer, probably the best player you can get out of 1990s basketball. Uh, and uh, D. Brown was a slam dunk champion. He was in the Fleer update. Willie Burton, he wind up putting up some big numbers for a few years, but wasn't a good NBA player, but he did have a 50-point game when he played for the Sixers. Uh, who else we got? Bo Kimball. He was uh, supposed to be a great NBA player. Might be one of the biggest busts, him and Lionel Simmons. Bo Kimball was in the movie. He played with Len Bias. And I thought Bo Kimball was going to be a great NBA player, and he was nobody. He turned out to be a big bust. Well, 1990 was a pretty great year all over. Leaf, Frank Thomas is probably the biggest card from 1990. I just recently bought a 1990 uh, Leaf, Frank Thomas. I'm trying to add cards to my collection that I didn't have growing up. So I got a Leaf, Frank Thomas, and I got a 1990 Tops Frank Thomas, PSA 9. And the Leaf's a PSA 9. So I'm trying to add some cards.